did Chelsea deserve this uh, this Europa League semi-final victory? I, I would suppose that I am just going to say Chelsea is a better team than Eintracht Frankfurt. Yeah. Uh, now I would also tell you that the best chances in this game, when it was 1-1, and if one team were to score, Frankfurt was closer than Chelsea was, and this is playing away from home. There were some disappointing performances from Chelsea individually, and I think as a group there were moments in which they thought, you know what, we're just better than this, than this group of players. Yeah. We, we're going to get our chances, we're going to score our goal. And it didn't quite happen for them, and it became more difficult than it needed to be. In the end, they advanced through penalty kicks. Chelsea's probably the better team. Mm. They advance, and they're probably the favourites going into the final. Mm. Kepa, the hero in the end. Shaka with two penalty saves. Yeah, two, two very good penalty saves. In, in actual fact, I think it's just kind of in your nature or instinct to go one side or the other. But on the fourth, he stood straight and, and was able to react to a very well struck penalty kick. Um, I, I don't think he offered an awful lot during, during the course of, of the 90 or 120 minutes, but then came up very big indeed in, in, in the penalty shootout, which is not easy to do. Looked like it was going to be fairly routine for Chelsea after Ruben Loftus-Cheek mm. gave him the lead. Where's he been, by the way, all, all season long? He looked great. Well, listen, he's looked great every time he stepped mm. on the field when he's been given an opportunity. Unfortunately, that opportunity didn't come until well after Christmas and, and in the, right. the Europa League. For some reason, he got ditched in the Premier League. Hopefully that has changed. Well, it's certainly changed recently. Uh, and he should be there to stay for a long time. Mm. This, this guy, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a monster for a start, physically. He's got a little turn of pace. He's mm. got a great touch. He's got an eye for a pass. He's got an eye for a goal. Mm. So why wasn't he in this lineup before? And, yeah. and actually, when he did score, I thought that was it. But for some reason, Chelsea took the foot off the pedal and let Frank go back say, in the why, game. Why didn't they put it away? It looked like it was going to be plain sailing, didn't it? After Well, I think, what, listen, when you go away in the first leg and you... I thought that Chelsea were the better side in Germany and they come away uh, with that 1-1. Then I think they just let the, they let the concentration go because they thought the game was probably over. Mm. And when you do that, the other team gets a lift and then it's very hard to then turn the tap back on again and be kind of dominant the way they were. But they got away with it, yeah. through, and uh, they don't care, do they? No, they don't. They're there. They're in Baku. Frankfurt will be ruining their chances. They miss an extra time, a couple of chances off the line. Yeah, and, and, and this are finishes that if you're a centre forward, in the case of Haller, he was right there. It's a good ball across. It's, it's tapping. It's my kind of range. And, and yet he doesn't make clean contact. Allows then the opportunity for David Luiz to come behind Kepa, who was just mm. merely just looking at the ball going in. He clears it off the line. And there were moments like that. Zapacosta did the same thing of a header. He was able to clear it off the line. Look, Eintracht Frankfurt had their chances here to advance. And it, they all happened because mm -hmm. Chelsea, not only in the first leg, but also in the second leg, it was the same, it was the same tendency of mm -hmm. we're too comfortable. We're okay. This is fine. It's no mm -hmm. problem. Hey, let's go to Baku already. Yeah. And, and allow Frankfurt a, a way back into this game. But again... I think we would be far more negative had they lost this match mm. and had they or, or had they not advanced. But they've advanced and now they find themselves with an opportunity to win themselves a trophy. Any sympathy for the German outfit, Shaka? Uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of sympathy. I, I mm. thought, listen, before a ball was kicked in this tie, we thought this would, this would be Chelsea all the way um, and wasn't even up for that much discussion. But Eintracht Frankfurt, who've had a, a very decent 2019, a no poor, poor result on the weekend, um, Gave us as good as they got against Chelsea. At home, Chelsea get the away goal and the draw. And, and, and you think, well, once you go back to Stamford Bridge, it's going to be all one-way traffic. But I thought they, they weathered an early storm and then got the goal, had some very good chances. And at this level of the game, you've got to take those chances when they come. Because when they don't, ultimately, you somehow find yourself on the wrong end of a result. What I can tell you, though, is that Jovic, for Eintracht Frankfurt, May not be playing no, with Eintracht Frankfurt no, no. for, no. Uh, that, that may for be too much long. Yeah. No, it, it, it feels like that's the kind of player that maybe a team in the Premier League should pay attention to. Of the two London teams in the semi-final, Steve, we perhaps thought Arsenal may have had the harder task, even though they had the two-goal lead to take into the Mestire against Valencia, who you thought would probably bother Arsenal. Didn't, uh, didn't turn out that way. Well, that's but. because we know what Arsenal are like defensively away from home. They can collapse and, 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 yeah. and, and let goals in. And... As, and they did. as soon as Valencia yeah. score, you think, oh dear. Yeah. But you know what? When you've got pace and ability like Aubameyang and Lacazette, yeah. basically, so far, 
their goals are digging out Arsenal's back line. Mm. And the problem with that is you can't continue to win games when you're relying on your front mm. players digging the back line out. Yeah, they do in the Europa League, though, and, they, and the, those front two get it down. So why can they beat the likes of Napoli and Valencia with ease in the Europa League, but they can't beat Brighton and they can't beat Crystal <laughs> Palace in the Premier League? It, it's puzzling. Well, yeah, it is puzzling, but at the same time, it's not. Mm. Because it's a personality that still remains uh, in this team in Arsenal that... At times, they just play down to the opposition. At times, they get bored of playing. At times, when there is no time and space, like Brighton sometimes may, may just put numbers behind the ball and make it difficult for them, you can't utilize the speed of, like I said, you can't utilize the speed of Aubameyang because there is no space in behind. So now you have to be able to create your own chances. And they haven't, they haven't done that consistently. And no, there's also another thing about Arsenal. Look, defensively, they got their issues. And when you're a team that you know... Everybody knows. They know it inside the locker room that they have their issues. Yeah. You, all, you feel like you have to be perfect on the, in the attacking half. And there are moments, there are games, we all know this, in which you can be perfect in the attacking half. And the more that you feel like you have to score goal after goal after goal, then it makes it more difficult for you because then the pressure ramps up. And so every single opportunity for, like I said, and Obama had to go in today. There were chances for Valencia here. It's not like, it's not like Arsenal was, was comfortable. They became comfortable because Aubameyang, like I said, did something special. Yeah. They were uncomfortable defensively throughout the course of the match. Speaking of, of Arsenal's uh, personality, um, this is an Arsenal team when, thing, when the game is easy and things are going their way, are very good and a match for anybody, dare I say, in Europe yep. on their day. But from the time you stand up to them, from the time you make it a physical battle and you make them uncomfortable, that's when they struggle. Mm -hmm. you, how you go to Napoli, put together that kind of a performance in Europa League, then come back home and do as, as you did, mm -hmm. not, not just away, but, but a home to Crystal Palace. Yeah. And to, to, when you think about this is a team who, all right, I know it was some time ago, but goes an entire season undefeated, and compare that to now, where it, it seems part of their DNA, where if it gets physical, if it gets yeah. nasty, if you ruffle their feathers, you, you, can, you can beat them. Do you think... Do you think that Unai Emery complicates things for Arsenal in the Premier League away mm. from home? Because in the Europa League away from home, they're open, they're attacking, mm. and they actually look like a team. In the Premier League away from home, it's almost like he doesn't want to make any mistakes. It's almost mm. like he wants to pull mm. them in a wee bit. And mm. when you pull players in whose first instinct is not about defending, then you get yourself in trouble. It, it has to be down to Unai Emery's tactics. For more, sign up now for ESPN+. Plus.